You're tuned in to The Keetra Show and listening to SOB, Style of Business. The podcast with your host, Keetra. We aim to highlight the ongoing trek of entrepreneurs and business owners from around the globe, featuring stories that recount their struggles, experiences, and inevitable road to success and self-fulfillment. Welcome to SOB. This podcast is being brought to you by my inspiring new book titled Courage is a Muscle, Using Heart to Power Your Entrepreneurial Dreams. You can grab your copy today on Amazon. Hey, what's up, y'all? Thanks for tuning in to another wonderful episode of SOB Style of Business, the podcast. This is your host, Keetra. And today I have another hot guest on the line uh, talking to Mrs. Nicole Sims, who is the CEO and founder of Creative Visual Solutions. Um, She's visiting with us today to talk a little bit about retail marketing. She specifically works... Uh, within the visual merchandise merchandising space. <laughs> I knew I was going to tear that one apart. The visual merchandising space, and uh, she's doing some wonderful things when it comes to just making sure that stores have their visual presentation, visual appeal on point and in check. Um, she has years of experience in the retail space. Like I mentioned before, she's worked with uh, some of the top brands in the industry, such as The Gap, Ann Taylor, Sports Authority, Forever 21, and several, uh, a boatload of others that she will uh, let us know uh, and tell us a little bit more about. But before we jump into that, let me go ahead and hand the ball over to Mrs. Nicole. Mrs. Nicole, drop that intro for us. Let us know a little bit about yourself, and then we will roll right forward from there. Oh, hi. Well, thank you for the great introduction. I appreciate that. That was awesome. So, yes, yeah, so I'm Nicole Sim. CEO of Creative Venture Solutions, which is a retail sales strategy consultant company that helps small retailers and boutique owners grow their business and expand, expand their brands. So my specialty is visual merchandising and merchandising. So I go into the visual side and the merchandising side of marketing and what brands and retailers really need to do and know to attract, retain, and engage with their customers. So there's a lot to it. We'll get into all that. We'll get to that later on. But I've, like she said, I've worked with companies. Gap and Taylor, Agassi, Forever 21. I've worked with, um, I was a regional visual for Sports Authority, and that's where I got introduced to doing a larger scale of helping um, brands like Gap, brands like Nike, Under Armour, North Face, some really good brands like that. So it's been a really good experience learning and kind of um, getting my craft and helping different types of retailers, different types of clients, different types of people learn how visual merchandise can grow their business. So I started my own company when I realized that a lot of independent retailers and a lot of small boutiques didn't have the access or the knowledge to how visual merchandising grow the business. So I started my company to be a consultant to help these smaller retailers get the access and the knowledge and the tools they need to use visual marketing to grow the business and expand the brand. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. And I especially love that you kind of branched out on your own to to create creative visual solutions because a lot of, I mean, it's kind of hard to find who, like, where do you go when you need uh, someone to, to take care of the retail stuff? But you know what, I, mm-hmm. I you know, and so I'm, I'm glad that I, uh, that we were able to connect because this is definitely going to help a lot of people who have, uh, especially small business owners who have retail space and they're looking to make sure that they uh, are visually uh, attractive and up to par when it comes to that. So tell us a little bit about um, that whole retail experience, because a lot of people think that it's just, okay, let's put the product in the stores, let's put up the, you know, sale signs, let's put up the discount signs, let's make sure that we have um, the, the registers working, the windows clean, but give us a little bit, give us a, a full rundown of what visual merchandising actually is and a little scope of what that entails. Yeah, that's a very good point. So that's that's what I deal with uh, every single day. That people have a misconception of what visual merchandising really is, and that yeah, it makes them look pretty. You do displays and signage, but that's only a part of it. So a lot of it has to do with your customer. It all starts with your customer, who your target market is, and then secondly, what your brand is. So you want it. So everything you do visually tells a story about who you are and who you serve. And people don't really think about that. So your windows are your first thing. I call the windows are the eye of the, the, the soul of of your business. So your windows are so important. The, the most important aspect of your store because that's the first impression you get to make. Mm-hmm. So you want to make sure that you're thinking of who the person is walking by my store that I want to attract and what story am I trying to tell them. 
So your display, how you're doing display, whether you're doing hard lines or you're doing apparel or jewelry, you want to make sure you're telling a story. And then you go inside, it all comes down to how are my customers engaging with me as a brand through my racks, as a brand through my signage, as a brand through my display, as a brand through the colors I'm using in my store. Am I making my colors feel me happy, somber? Are my, my colors making them moody? Are my colors telling them that I am bright? Are my colors telling them I'm serious and um, conservative? It goes through all of that. So every single aspect of your store, your visual merchandising, goes back to your customer and who you brand it. And so it takes a lot more planning up front, but it's also fun because then you can play with, okay, well, I love customers to think that I'm fun and and, and um, carefree. What yeah. color is spark color carefree? That's how I display my things. But if you're like a, maybe you're a high-end boutique and you sell $5,000 items, you don't want color and carefree. You yeah. want somber, serious a conservative, so you're going to have more muted colors. You're going to have darker lighting. Wow. Uh, you know, and people don't really think about that. Um, let, let me ask you this. How much, because I, I hear about the stores that have, like, the scents, you know, to, to or the lighting to, to mm-hmm. elevate certain moods. Like, would that be considered part of the, uh, I guess, the, the visual is, is that a part of the, the merchandising, or, or how, how would that yes, be Yes, it is. Okay, okay. Yes, it is. So the visual merchandising, another concept is it's just it's just your eyes, but it's all senses. So while you, well, you brought that up, lighting is so important. Lighting, music, and um, lighting and sound and smell are so important to overall, again, messages you're sending your customers. So, again, like I just used the example with the high-end boutique, if you went, walked into a high-end boutique selling $5,000 coats, but it was really, really bright, you had all kind of multi colors in there, it was pink and blue strobe lights. You're like, what is going on? It doesn't right. matter. <laughs> right. so your coloring really has to be the more clean, crisp, a little maybe a little dimmer in some areas that matches your mood. Same thing with the smells. If you're doing something that you're selling some kind of like nice artistry or some nice stationery, you want to smell clean and fresh in there. You don't want it to smell like um, you're going to a club or something like that. So kind of, you know, drastic, but it also matches. And then you also want to make sure the music. Music is a really big part. Your music has to match your brand and match your customer. Same thing with the, with the high-end boutique. If I walk into a high-end boutique and I'm hearing hip-hop, it doesn't match. I'm like a high end boutique, and I hear jazz and classical, it matches the mood. So, all of that is visual merchandising. All, all of that goes in towards telling your customer who you are and then attracting the people you want to serve. So, it's a very good point. Wow. Okay. Yeah, because I know, like, the customer experience, like you just mentioned, that that is going to be decided, I guess, I guess you have to pull them in, you know, you have to give mm-hmm. them a reason to, to be interested to even step into the store. So mm-hmm. with that being said, give us a little rundown um, over at Creative Visual Solutions. Tell us a little bit about how you guys go about helping a, a client to to lay out what the first step should be. What What's the second step? Like, say, for instance, if somebody's, uh, they opened a store and they're selling uh, swimwear or something like that for the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, this is not a service that you could just, you know, call a, a regular uh, marketing company and say, you know, hey, I'm looking for visual merchan- merchandising because this, this right. is a specialization. Um, so, right. like, give us a little bit about, like, what what is the process and how, it, it, like, would you ever be, would a company ever be, like, not ready for visual merchandising or do you always need to have this, like, regardless if you're just starting up and you have, like, you know, just a handful of customers, is that something that you need to consider um you know, uh, prior to. So I guess that's that's two questions actually. So like, h- how do you get started? <laughs> I'm trying to get, I'm mm-hmm. getting, I'm trying to get the audience. I'm giving y'all all the meat. I'm I'm asking her as much <laughs> as we can because it's some good information. But um, first of all, how do you get started with a company like Visual Solutions to f- to figure out how how to uh, Visual Creative? Oh, look at me, I'm just tearing you apart. Creative Visual Solutions. <laughs> visual Solutions. Yeah, to figure out how to come up with a strategy. And then second of all, at what point do you need to consider your whole visual merchandising strategy? So I, I want to answer that second question because it's a really most important question because you start right away. As soon as you decide you want to have a boutique, a store, or online store, visual merchandising comes into play. Because if you don't nail it right away, you're going to detract customers, that they can track who you want, and you're going to give the wrong impression of your brand. So it goes right away. So visual merchandising is as soon as you decide you're going to do it, you're going to have a merchandising plan. So that's the first thing. So the answer to the first question, um, you 
basically anytime you we go into your wherever you are, where you've been in business for five minutes, you've been in business for five years, you could always use a visual merchandising upgrade because you might be getting you might again you don't know what you don't know. So like I said, you like a lot of people who get into um, uh, boutiques and stores have a passion for the product. And they love what they're selling, and they love fashion, or they love stationery, they love jewelry, but they don't know how to run that side of the business. Mm -hmm. And so we come in any any stages, and we come in and like, okay, I do basically an audit of your entire store, and I go from the front to back. I look at your windows, I look at your fixtures, I look at your spacing because your spacing is important. I look at the way your angles of your fixtures are made. I look at your merchandising. I look at your signage strategy. I look at your pricing strategy. I look at your inventory turns. I look at everything because all of that has to do with the original merchandising because inventory is important as well because you can have something that's not selling in the back of your store. You've had it for maybe six months and not selling. I re-merchandise it and it sells out. Oh, wow. So that's how important the original merchandising can be to your business and because, oh, I bought a dog. I bought something that's not going to sell. Oh, because you have it back here. You don't have a color. You don't have it in the color merchandising um, flow and it's not flowing. You can't really see it. Put it on the mannequin. Put the mannequin towards the front in the window. Put that fixture up to the front. Let's re-merchandise it and get it in that category and sell that. Yeah. So it has to do with every aspect of your business. So we go in and we basically look at every single thing that you're doing. And if you're doing a lot of things right, great, but it's always we can elevate. So if you're already good at doing mannequins, you're already good at doing um, your tables well, you're already doing, doing colorization, but what are you, well, how's your science strategy? How is your lighting doing? How is your pricing strategy? How is your inventory turned? Things like that. So it goes through all of it. But, yeah, everybody who opens a store needs to be that and make money. Oh wow, and and can you speak a little bit about uh, a little bit on uh, when it comes to the different seasons? Should your mm-hmm. should your strategy change? Like, say, for instance, we're getting ready to go into the summer months or the summer season, rather. Um, you have like your traditional setup, and then you know perhaps you have some merchandise like swim swimwear. You know, like maybe mm-hmm. there's a, a collection, a summer collection, or whatever. Um, should you change your setup due to the season, or is that less important? It's important because again, you're you're a reflection of your customer. So if you are you know that you, let's say you're where I am in California right now, and you and we're starting to get the beaches just started open, and people are starting to get excited to go back out again, and they want to see swimwear, and your swimwear's in the back of your store. I'm walking by you, I don't see it, I'm not coming to your store. Yeah. So you, so your strategies are the same, but what you focus on within those strategies change by the season to your point, which is a very good point. You do change up your um, makeup of your store, but your strategies are how you do it and who you're attracting don't change. So you already know you have a customer who wants swimwear, but it's October, she's not looking for swimwear right now. You don't focus on it. You focus on whatever she's looking at at that time, but then you know comes June, she's looking at it again. Then you change, take the same strategies, but then you change your focus and your merchandising and focus on that for that season because you want to make sure you're turning into that seasonality. So it's very important to change what you focus on during the season, but your strategies and the tips and techniques and tricks don't change. So you end up changing, yeah, and that that makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. And thanks for explaining that for us. Um, and uh, okay, so another thing, speaking of changing strategies. Now with, you know, COVID and, you know, everything that's going on, people are not Mm -hmm. able to to get out. You have a lot of the retail spaces who are not even open or maybe they're open to a limited degree. You know, they they don't really have that uh, foot foot flow, that traffic flow coming through as they normally would have. What, What are your suggestions? Like, okay, you have visual merchandising within the brick and mortar. How do you translate that? online to to be able to attract your customers maybe perhaps you you haven't had that online presence before but that's something that you're considering now because you know you people are having to stay at home and shop online um give us a little rundown of how that works visual merchandising online that's a very good question i actually had to pivot my business because of that because when i first opened i was concentrating on brick and mortar and then because of covid i had to pivot and change and take those same strategies online. So it's a perfectly good question. That's where a lot of the owners are. Even if they're opening up, their online business is strong right now. And that's where people yeah. are still shopping. I'm shopping online. I just bought something last night. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm still right. online. So I'm still shopping online. So that customer has grown. And this is where the business is. So it's a very important question. The concepts don't ch- The concepts are the same. They just look differently. So mm. you don't have to worry about lighting because you're worried about you're on a computer screen. But you do have to worry about color. You still have to worry about your branding. So you still have these to translate whatever colors you are. So if you are, again, you're a high-end boutique, you're a high-end boutique online, your code has to reflect that. So everything on your line should be crisp, clean, mod, um, pulled together, 
conservative. So your your font, your um your logo itself, all the colors you're using, your background, that all is the same concept, but now you're putting it on a computer screen. How you do your displays and for so now you're doing flat lays, you're doing mannequins, you're doing pictures, but you gotta make sure that you're flowing them correctly. So you're flowing left to right, how customers read, how they want to read the pictures on your page. You want to make sure you're grouping things by category. So when I go on your page and I look for tops and I want a short sleeve top, I'm not going through all kinds of different things to find it. Make it easy for me to find. Clean, consent, group everything by category. You want to make sure that everything's flowing simply. You want to make sure that your spacing is good. So those things, those concepts are the same. They're just differently because you're using a computer script. So you want to make sure that whatever you do speaks to your customer. You want to attract them. The number one um, issue that online boutiques have is, is card abandonment. Yeah. And what the kind of bad happens is I'm bored. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm looking through your thing. Either I'm bored or I'm, or I'm bored or I'm annoyed. For yeah, me, it's annoying. Both, exactly. I, 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 yeah, for me, it's annoyed. You annoy me in the way I'm gone. But I, I'll stick through, you know, I'll go through it. I'll, I'll take the <laughs> right. time. But for the average customer, it won't. So if you don't engage me on my on your screen with really, with different types of um, merchandising displays, lots of good color, I can read, go through your lines, I can find what I want within a few seconds of going through all kinds of things and finding just to find one shirt, I'm out of here. So it's the same yeah, kind of concept. Yeah. Keep them engaged. Keep them happy. Don't annoy them. Get them through the process easy. And another thing that also, because you are online, your customer service has to reflect everything. So be open for emails. Be open for questions. Make sure that, that your um, checkout card is simple, easy, clean, and explains everything you need to know. There's no hidden costs, hidden fees, and it's easy for me to check out. And I have a problem. I can find out how to resolve my problem. All of that keeps your salespeople, keeps your selling, and keeps your customers coming back to you and staying on with you. So again, same concept, but this sweeps a little bit because you're on not. Wow. Yeah. And you, you are absolutely right about that uh, card abandonment, <laughs> especially <laughs> when you, if you get to a website and there's no secure socket layer <laughs> or, you know, mm-hmm. there's, you know, some things going on with shipping. Uh, th- there's a host of things. But um, let me wh- what is your what would you suggest for uh, a small business owner who is, you know, is creating a an online store? I know you have sites like Etsy and Mm -hmm. Um, big cartel and things like that. Like, would you, do you have any suggestions on how they could actually pivot? Maybe they have their brick and mortar, you know, and they've never considered the online before, you know, before, I guess, before everything happened with with COVID. But Mm -hmm. now that's something they need to do. Like, would you, do you have any suggestions on maybe a couple of steps they could take to start that process? Yes. So I definitely think even though brick and mortar are opening up, you have to be online regardless because that customer has shifted. Mm, and the yeah. retail e-commerce has is, is actually shifted to being more strong. And I still open your store if you still have one because retail is strong coming back. Don't get me wrong, but you have to be online. So I definitely will really highly recommend depending on your budget. So if you have a good, if you have a, a nice size budget, I'll definitely go to Shopify. If your budget is a little bit lower, I'll go to Etsy. Etsy is more of a, I can showcase my items on there and Etsy is a lot of work for you. But the way Shopify has changed so much because e-commerce has gotten so big, they've actually modified all to make it a lot easier for business owners to get on there and make it more interactive. They do uh, marketing for you now, and they do posting for you now, and they do more things with the car abandonment and payment. So they do really easy for you to have a business on Shopify. But Shopify, and that's the two ones I would definitely choose and get on there. And then um, definitely go to, well, you know, my Instagram or my Facebook and find out how to give some really great tips. But you yeah, want to make sure that you're using rich merchandising tips and branding on there. So you want to sit down. So as much work as you put in your brick and mortar, to get the right feel, you got to put it on the same way and on online because you have more competition now. And you have to stand out and you have to be something that when I go, whatever market you're in, that your voice speaks to me as your customer and I will shop with you because once I'm with you, I'm with you. Yeah. Even though it might be 5,000 people that sell what you sell, but if you make me feel at home on your page, you draw me in, you engage me, and you give me something to you know look at and you know, feel good about shopping with, I'm going to come back. So you have to think all those things um, in place to make sure that you do that. But you have to get online, regardless if you're brick and mortar or not. You have to get online and have that business. But you just um, make sure you're not just like, okay, I have something online. It's running on itself. No, treat it like your store. Treat it yeah. like your baby. And make sure you're putting all the effort in to make sure you're making it. Because the more you put into it, the more you can get out of it. And your customers will see it. 
and the customers will appreciate it, and that makes you stand out because there's so many people out there that just threw a site together. I've seen it because, you yeah. know, I'm looking at people's <laughs> sites all day long. It's my job. So I'm seeing yeah. it, and they're looking at it. I'm like, wow, I can really help you because you just threw this together. <laughs> oh, my goodness, And I've yeah. gone to people that... A lot of people are like, oh, my God, you did it. And they were in business for six months. But you can't tell because they took the time to make it look really nice and attract the customer. Yeah. And now yeah. I'm a customer of theirs because, oh, I like what you have going on here. I, I subscribe. I'm good. And so that's what you want. So just make sure that you get on Etsy, Shopify, and you take the time. I just reiterate, take the time to really treat it like your store and your business and your customers will notice. Perfect. Thanks so much for sharing that, Nicole. Okay, and so let's let's talk. I, I want to jump back to uh, Creative Visual, what you guys do, mm-hmm. and some of the services that you offer. I know you briefly touched on, uh, you know, uh, some of it, but uh, specifically, like, do you have uh, certain packages or certain? Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe you do like um, consultations for like, you know, startups or in entrepreneurs, things like that. Like, give us a rundown of like a menu of a handful of service items that you guys offer. Or if somebody's listening is interested in reaching out. Sure. So my overall huge package is what I do is called a um, grow your business uh, and for our intensive. And so basically this is for any business. So this could be okay. online. It could be offline. It could be you've been in business for 20 minutes. It could be business for 20 years. I help everyone. Okay. And so, but, but what happens is we sit down for two hours, basically sit down, what are your three main goals? And we look at what are the three main goals you want to accomplish and actually do a complete audit either of your store on, on, on brick and mortar or a complete audit of your online store. And I give you all the things I see that need to be tweaked, elevated, corrected, have not opportunities. And we take the top three that you want to work on and we fix stuff. Then in the second half of it, I talk about brand expansion. So mm-hmm. everyone wants to expand their brand. There's different ways you can do it. Once we open up more, there's pop-up shop events. There's events, there's conferences where especially if you're online, you need to be physical because um, you're online only. People still want to shop in a store. They still want to touch, feel, and get to know you as a person, as a brand. So I talk about expansion that way. I also talk about expansion for wholesale, getting you in local markets. So again, if you're online boutique only, getting you in local markets. If you are a boutique owner and you have a brick and mortar, getting you into pop-up shops, getting you into more stores, getting you more things like that. So that's my encompassing one that I have. It's Grow Your Business um, um, VIP. But then I have one that most people like, which is with my um, Grow Your Business 90-Minute Intensive, which basically is 90 minutes. And we do all of that. We basically concentrate on two of your main goals, and we really deep dive into everything that's going on, whether you're brick and mortar or you're online, and we really concentrate on what are your two main goals you want to do, and then I'm going to do an audit of your store, an audit of your online store, and give you all the top things you need to do to elevate and improve in um, all the opportunities you have. So if I were your brick and mortar store, I would go and do say, okay, you need to really work on your sign strategy in here. You need to work on your pricing strategy, your windows, your window displays. You need to work on your storytelling, your lighting, your this. And then we do all of that and think, okay, what are the top two goals you want to achieve with your business? And we go and give you a strategy for that. If you're online, okay, you need to work on your branding. Your branding message is not telling you right. Your logo is not correctly. Your display techniques are need to be a little more polished, a little more this. We go through all of that. Okay, what are the top two goals you want to accomplish? in your store. Okay, great. We're going to go and give you a strategy to fit that. So those are the two. I have more wow. of those, but those are my yeah. two main ones where it depends you want to really deep dive and really get in the overall haul and expand your brand. That way you do the um, one for four hours. And then all at the same time, it's two hours and then one hour, two follow-ups to give you time to implement. And then if you want to do a more of a, do a quicker deep dive and get more implementation going faster, you do a 90-minute intensive. <clears throat> they both do really good for your business. They both give you overhaul of your store and your visual and your marketing strategies. But I touch marketing, sales, inventory, pricing, everything, because that's all encompasses how you're going to grow your business. And then if you're interested in expanding your brand, getting beyond the brick and mortar, or getting beyond your online, we yeah. go over that as well. Wow. Yeah. And that's, I know a lot of people miss the mark, even myself included, <laughs> you know, sometimes. <laughs> Because we move so fast, you know, when it comes to mm-hmm. trying to expand the brand and you have things that are off and things that need to be worked. But uh, thankfully, there's people like you who can come in and combat that and, and help us to create uh the visual appeal that we're looking to have. And like mm-hmm. before I, before I go out, there, there's another question. I know we're getting ready to wrap up. Um, sometimes when it comes to like something being visually attractive or set up, you know, everything is mm-hmm. ready to go in the store. Now, should that, this is a question that just popped up. So I'm going to ask it. Is that a, is that, um, does that 
always translate into sales. Like having a your your merchandising and everything on point, should that always translate to sales or, or what, you know, or how do you match those two up? That's a good question because, again, that's still a misconception. There's actually um, scientific correlation between visual merchandising and sales. So having – there's actually the science behind it that if you have all these visual points that I go over, the, your top tips and making sure that all these visual aspects, the top five um, standards that you have in place, your sales will increase yeah. because they yeah. deal with the psychology of people. And so people understand that visual merchandising deals with psychology of people. So if I'm telling by my, my I'm invoking emotion with you, but we buy on emotion, especially women. We buy on emotion. Yeah. So if I can do a display that makes me feel something, I'm going to walk into your store. If I can give you a color or a lighting that makes you feel, have a reaction positively, I'm going to keep browsing. So if I go to a display that um, gives me information from a signage, tells me about the, the buyer, tells me about the brand, tells me even the signing message telling me the price, I'm going to engage. So all of that comes into play with dealing with how people interact psychology-wise, and then I invoke people to buy from you. But if you're missing any of those steps, just any of them, you're mm. actually turning away sales. So if you maybe you have a great window that invokes emotion and draws me in, but then I go in your store, it's dark, it's flat, there's no color, there's no organization, there's no sign, I know what's going on, your your picture's all over the place, I can't walk through, I feel cluttered, I'm out of here. I'm out. So yeah. you had the one thing that you nailed because you walked me in, but everything else visually was off, I walk out. Or maybe I don't I walk in, I maybe I'm interested and I see some things, but then you've done so many things that are detracting me and I'm confused or I'm not engaged or I'm not getting emotionally involved. Well, okay, I'm gonna walk out. Yeah. So just by having those four things not nailed visually, you turned away a customer, which again turned away sales. So yes, to answer your question and in a long way, but yes. Visual merchandising is a direct yeah. correlation to your sales. Wow. Yeah, I know I've walked away <laughs> from a few of those stores. So, <laughs> hey, <laughs> if y'all look, y'all better call Miss Nicole and, and get that retail, <laughs> you know, get that retail marketing, get your, your brands visually set up and prepared and ready to go. Um, this is some good stuff. Like I said, this, this, uh, a lot of people miss it when it comes to this. Um, we feel like yeah. we can just kind of set stuff up and just keep the ball rolling when we put up the, you know, the, the, uh, for sale sign and, you know, get the registers mm-hmm. and all that other stuff ready to go. But this is some great information. So we definitely appreciate you sharing it with us, Nicole. Oh, so and bef- welcome. Yes, ma'am. And before we wrap up, um, let us know where we can find you online, um, social media handles, websites, anything that you want to offer. If you have anything else that you'd like to mention, go ahead and leave that as well. Sure. So uh, my website is www.creativevisualsolutions.wordpress.com. And if you go on there, the first uh, um, button on there talks about actually a great resource, a free resource I have for people to give you the five top merchandising tri- merchandising tricks for online sales. So if you're an online boutique store or if you want to get an online boutique store, it's really highly recommended you get on here. It's, it's free. You just go click on the link and you'll have uh, five top strategies to kind of something I, just, I talked about just now, but in detail of how you can make sure that your online store is ready for sale. Um, on Instagram, my handle is creative with S solutions. And I have a lot of great tips on there as well about, I go into a lot of detail about marketing, about merchandising, about sales, uh, online and offline for boutiques and give some great um, merchandising sales information. Same as my Facebook page, which is um, Creative Visual Solutions 1, which goes into a lot of details as well. So we have three good resources. Um, and you contact me, either one of those. And of course, you can sign up with me on my website for a consultation. You can also DM me. I'm free. I love to interact with people. DM me on Facebook, DM me on Instagram and ask some questions and get interactions and also find time to work together on um, the 20 minute free call. So all of those three resources for you, but I really highly recommend going to the website, click on that link at your online store to get those resources for you because it really will make a difference to making your sales this week. Perfect. Free resources. Free, free, free. That's perfect. <laughs> just, 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 just the tip of the iceberg. Everything else, uh, there's a service, you know. Yeah. So we definitely appreciate that, Nicole, and uh, looking forward to having you back on the show. Um, you have a great, great rest of the day, and we'll we'll look forward Thank to talking you. to you soon. Yes, ma'am. Talk great. To you soon. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Yep, for sure. Thank you. You take care. 
Thanks for hanging out with us here on SOB. We hope this episode has been resourceful. If you'd like to check out the latest articles or follow Keetra's website updates, just log on to Keetra.com or follow her on Twitter at K-E-E-T-R-I-A.